Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, we are starting the transformation over at Water Street. So anytime I am flipping a booth or transforming a booth, a lot goes into it behind the scenes. I wanted to first and foremost get some furniture pieces gathered and I have to build some shelves. So today we are tackling the very first piece. Uh, it is going to be front and center. Everything in my booth is for sale, so it will be for sale. Uh, but I think it's going to be the perfect size in the center of the booth. So stick around and watch how I transform a piece that I thrifted when I was in northern Wisconsin this past summer. Um, it has been in my stash and I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. Well, in today's video, we are flipping it. Here is the first item we will be tackling for Water Street Vintage. I thrifted this when I was in northern Wisconsin. Uh, it was over the summer at the rummage sales. Uh, they have an annual rummage sale in Phelps. And it is so fun, you guys. If you have an opportunity to get up there and rummage, it is a ton of fun. What caught my eye was all the ornate detail on this. This one did come with a glass top. Uh, it was like a brown glass, though. And I set that aside. I think I'm going to either try to repurpose it somehow or possibly just get rid of it. It is very dirty, so the very first thing I'm doing to it is I am going to wash it really well. Uh, because there's so much ornate um, detail on here, I actually had to go and get a toothbrush and really scrub in there, and you can see how dirty this is. Uh, but anytime that you guys are working on a piece, I would highly recommend washing it really thoroughly. I did use, um, and I didn't show it on here, but Fusion has a cleaner called TSP. You put a little bit in, uh, like a, almost like a cap full in some water and wash it all and all the dirt comes off. It is like one of the best cleaners. So I definitely would recommend that. This is when I broke out that toothbrush. I really needed to get into all that detail. This was definitely sitting in their garage for a while collecting dust. Uh, when I bought it, it was this dirty. Uh, it has been sitting in my stash, so I'm sure it's collecting dust there as well. Uh, but once I got this all cleaned and, then, and prepped, it was ready to paint. If you missed my video on Friday, here is a little glimpse of Water Street Vintage. I have all my IOD here on the left, and then in the center on the back wall, I have my DIY paint. I also have a bit more IOD on a rack right there in the center. It's taking up a lot of room, and I've talked about this for a while, removing that rack, I think it's time. And I have a new way I want to display all the IOD stamps, uh, the transfers, paint inlays, and all that good stuff. I'm then gonna take all of my Roycycle decoupage paper and put it over on this side, and then we are gonna revamp it all. The table that we're working on today is gonna go where the stamps are being housed right now. For this project, I thought Ingle Nook from Fusion would be perfect. I am using the Stahlmeister pointed 14-inch uh, paintbrush, and anytime I am painting, I do like to start with my project uh, upside down first and really paint the bottom. And if you don't know about Fusion Paint, a couple tidbits of info, uh, Fusion Paint does have a built-in top coat, so there's no need to seal. And really the prep work on an item, just like I did, you want to clean your piece very thoroughly like I did, let it dry, and then you are able to paint. Now, if you have a real glossy surface or a surface that the paint doesn't want to stick to, there is the ultra grip and I do recommend putting that down if you have a surface like that otherwise this surface there there really was not a lot of like sealer on it it's just an old piece so what I did is I applied two even coats of the fusion to the entire piece 
In between coats, I let it dry very thoroughly though. And um, this paintbrush worked perfect. I talk about the perfectionist and how that works so great with the DIY paint. This is exactly the paintbrush you wanna use for all that detail that I showed you right at the beginning. It got in there and it was absolutely perfect. Now that the piece is completely dry, I'm using my hand sander. I am putting it down to the speed of one. It goes up to the speed of six. And by putting it in on one, you have a little bit better control. Uh, I would prefer to hand sand, but I was in a bit of a hurry. So I broke out the sander and I just want to touch it here and there just to add a little bit of distress. And I am loving it. I love how it brings out all the detail of the piece. And uh, you can see that a couple areas, I think I may have taken off a little bit too much paint and then that's when I decided that I was going to add a bit of wax to this to really bring out all that beautiful detail even further. The wax I'm using is DIY's Dark Wax and I love how all the products that I offer in my online store work together. So because Fusion has that top coat, it already is sealed and it's a perfect surface for the DIY wax to be applied over. I'm just going in with a waxing brush and I am applying just a nice even layer of the wax. And what I like to do is work in sections. It makes it so much easier and you have a lot better control. So I'm starting here and like I said applying just one even coat then I'm grabbing some paper towel you can use an old rag as well and then I'm like wiping away the excess and I just love how it's going to bring out all that detail and keep in mind uh, DIY does have clear wax as well so a great way to use that with the dark wax is if you apply too much or you you think it's too dark go in with a bit of clear wax and it actually like erases the dark wax and uh, that way it gives you better control over it as well but honestly you guys this is the perfect amount of wax and I love how it got into all those details and really made the whole piece pop then I'm on to the next section and I just work my way all the way around, adding a bit of wax, wiping it off. And uh, again, you guys, I just think it adds so much to this piece. It really makes it look like it has an old world feel to it. Because I don't want to reuse that glass, I grabbed the 30 inch round panel and we're gonna stain it. And I think this is going to be the perfect addition to this piece. For the top, what I'm using is Fusion's gel stain with top coat built in. This one is called Double Espresso. I was back and forth whether or not I wanted to use the black gel stain or the double espresso and I went with the double espresso because I thought with that dark wax and that whole old world feel this would fit perfectly. I love using gel stains so I was really excited to try this out you guys and I do offer it and carry it in my booths. I don't currently carry it online um, but I absolutely love it. Uh, it does say you can add a second coat which I plan on doing and the coverage was really good. I just think I want to have a little bit more of a less opaque look, more of a solid look to it. So I'm going to add a second coat but it does recommend four hours in between coats 
So I'm dying to know what you guys think. How do you think the base turned out? What do you think about the top? Uh, I really love it and I think it's going to be a great addition to my booth. Uh, after I let this all dry, I am going to use my brad nailer and from underneath, I am going to brad nail the base to the top. So that is probably going to be a question is how I'm going to secure this the top and it will be with a brad nailer. The other question that might come up is, will you be staining underneath? I absolutely will. I will be putting two coats on the top and then flip it over and put two coats underneath as well to completely finish off the project. What did you guys all think? I hope you loved the table as much as I did. I think it has a real like old world feel to it. I love the top. I love that espresso. I was debating black or espresso and I definitely went with espresso as you guys know. Uh, I think it's a really good fit for that table. I cannot wait to start tackling the next few items. Uh, and then bring you to the booth and show you how I'm going to completely transform it to make it look very, very different. And uh, I'm going to be adding the Sweet Pickens milk paint to it, uh, along with just redoing the entire IOD booth. So I cannot wait to bring you guys along for that. Um, also, I want to let you guys know that my membership has officially opened. It opened on March 1st. I'm leaving it open for a full two weeks. If you do want more information, definitely email me. I have been busy uh, over the weekend and today, but I will start responding to those emails and, got, and get you guys into the group. Uh, if you don't know what my membership is, it is officially two years old. Uh, we have roughly 40 members and it's a great group of ladies that we meet once a week. We talk all things business while well, we do some creative stuff too. Uh, and we're just a really tight knit group of ladies that just support each other in our business journeys. And if that is something you are interested in, I will have more details um, linked down in the description. Uh, but definitely reach out to me and I can provide that all to you. Uh, Friday's video, you guys, I think I'm going to be back thrifty, th like another thrift to treasure. I definitely need to be clearing out a lot of items and I'm going to be flipping some more furniture pieces along with some smalls for Water Street. So you guys have a great week and we will see you Friday. Bye.